Hi everybody, it's Christopher and welcome to Life's Not Over, It Just Looks Different on YouTube. In today's video, I want to talk about one of my favorite things, which is the Registered Disability Savings Plan, also known as the RDSP. Now, I learned about the RDSP back in 2008, early 2008 actually, before it was introduced. A friend of mine sent me an email that he had received from another colleague of his telling about this program that was coming out. And my friend sent me this email because he knew I was in financial services and said, is this legit? So I checked it out and I started doing some research online and checking and uh, finding out the information that I could. And it turns out that yes, this RDSP was being introduced in later 2008. And so I told my friend that yes, it was a thing and so he was all excited to get on it and so was I having learned about it I thought wow this is a fabulous thing so let's talk a little bit about it just top level and then we'll get into some of the details of how it works the RDSP is a program that is it's a savings program for people with disabilities so that they can have uh, hopefully another source of income other than the Canada Pension Plan and old age security benefits beyond age 60, they can have a little bit of income from this registered disability savings plan depending on how much is contributed to the plan, what bonds or grants they receive, and I'll get into more of those in a few minutes, and also depending on how the money is invested and what it can grow into. So those three factors can provide a, a savings vehicle that helps the person past the age of 60, the person with a disability. And we're going to get into the details of how the plan works here. So let's take a look first of all at what you need to qualify for an RDSP. Now normally I would do this with the with a flip chart when I'm doing an in-person presentation, but thanks to COVID, haven't been able to do one of those in a while. So I thought, well, I'm going to do the next best thing here for this video and I'm going to employ my CCTV to help me out with this. So there's a few things that you have to be or have in place in order to qualify for an RDSP. First of all, you need to be a Canadian resident when you are contributing to the plan and when the um, plan is paying out to you. Secondly, you need to have a valid social insurance number in Canada. Third, you have to be under the age of 49 and I'm going to, there's an asterisk on that. I'm going to get into more details on that as we go along. but. Right now, let's work with the age of 49. And then you also have to be eligible for the disability tax credit. And I love that the government put this one on the list. You have to be alive. Makes sense to me. I, I think that's a good thing. So there are two types of benefits that come from an RDSP you can receive what are known as Canada Disability Savings Bonds. And for the bonds, you can receive up to $1,000 a year to a maximum of $20,000 lifetime. And then there is also another program called the Canada Disability Savings Grant, which you can receive a maximum of $3,500 per year up to a maximum of $70,000 lifetime. And we're gonna get into the details of how to access those bonds and grants as we go here. So for the Canada Disability Savings Bond, as I said, you can receive up to $1,000 a year for a maximum of 20 years. And to receive the $1,000 bond, your total family income has to be under $32,028. Now these are the 2021 numbers. This number changes every year. So check with your financial institution if you're going to open up one of these accounts to see what that year's number is. But for 2021, it's $32,028. If your income is below that, you are eligible to apply for and also receive up to a $1,000 grant into the RDSP. If your income is between $32,028 and $49,020, then the bond is prorated. So instead of giving $1,000, the government has a formula. You can find it on the CRA website. There is a formula to calculate what the, what the prorated bond would be. So you won't receive the full thousand, but you'll receive some amount of money. 
But if you are with a family total family income of more than $49,020, then there is no Canada Disability Savings Bond eligible. It's about half of the, the grant amount, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment here. So those are the amounts that you can refer to for 2021 in order to know whether or not you qualify to apply for the Canada Disability Savings Bond. For the Canada Disability Savings Grant, which is a portion that is a match from the government depending on the amount of money contributed to the plan, which I'll talk more about who can contribute and how and all those sorts of things in a few minutes. But for 2021, the magic number that we're looking at is $98,040. If the total family income is less than that amount, then the, to the grant that can be received is a three to one match of the first $500 contributed and a two to one match on the next $1,000 contributed to the plan in 2021. If the total family income is above $98,040, then the maximum, uh, the maximum grant that you can receive is a one-to-one -one match of the first $1,000 that is contributed. And then the maximum that you can contribute to an RDSP lifetime is $200,000. At the beginning of the video, I talked a little bit about the asterisks on the age of 49 for the RDSP program. And where that asterisk comes into play is because you are eligible or the person who is the beneficiary of the RDSP, and I'm gonna get into terminology in a minute, but the person who is eligible to receive the, the income from the RDSP is eligible to receive Canada Disability Savings bonds and grants in the program up to the end of the year that they turn 49. So if you're turning 49 in 2021, this is the last year that you are going to be able to get bonds or grants through the matching contribution program in the RDSP. And then you can continue to contribute to the plan up to the age of 59, but for that period between 49 and 59, there will be no matching grant or no bond contributed from the government side. You can continue to contribute money to the plan uh, for tax sheltering purposes, if you wish, but you're not going to get any bonds or grant matching from the Canadian government on this program over the age of 49. So let's get into an example just to go back and reestablish the, the grant portion and how the matching all works. So if the total family income for the year, in this case 2021, is less than $98,040, on the first $500 that is contributed, there's a three to one match. So for $500 contributed, the government puts in $1,500. And then on the next $1,000 that is contributed to the RDSP in 2021, they're eligible for a matching grant two to one. So the government will put in another $2,000 to match the $1,000 that was contributed. So basically, if you put in $1,500 in the year, in 2021 in this example, and your income is under that $98,040, the government is going to put in $3,500 in matching grants for that year. And continuing with the example on the contribution, if the family income for 2021 in this case is over $98,040, then the first $1,000 that is contributed, there will receive a one-to-one -one match or a $1,000 grant from the government. So let's talk about where the government gets those numbers from, the, the numbers like the $98,040. What they're doing is they're looking two years back on income tax returns. So for 2021, they're looking at income tax returns from 2019. And they'll keep looking back that far, the two years, they'll, they'll keep that separation because they issue a letter at the beginning of 2021, for instance, to tell you how much you're eligible for and how much you, what the matching would look like if you, if you contributed. But they don't know what your income was in 2020 by January of 2021. 
so they, because taxes haven't been filed and, and so they don't have the number. So that's why they go back to 2019 in this case for the 2021 um, calculations to establish what the grants and, grants and bonds would be as far as eligibility. You might have noticed as we've been doing this video that you, every time I go to move my page on my CCTV, there's this gear locking sound that you might be hearing. And that is me locking and unlocking the tablet that holds the page so that I can lock it in place to talk about certain things or move it around to see anything else that I wanna see on the screen and on the page. So I wanna talk about a few key terms for the RDSP, starting with the holder. Now, the holder of the account is the person who opens it. So if the child is under 18 years of age, then the holder might be a parent or guardian who has opened it up. If the person is 18 years of age or older, then they become the holder of the plan. They can open up their own plan and be the holder of it. The next person to talk about is the contributor. Now, the contributor, in the case again of a child who's under 18 years of age, the contributor might be the parents, but you can also give written permission for other people to be contributors, such as grandparents, aunts, uncles, whomever. So talk to your financial institution about that. And then if the person is over 18, they can be the holder and the contributor. And if the person is over 18 and they're also the person with the disability, then they are also the beneficiary of the program. If it's being opened up for a child who is under 18, if the child is the one with the disability and the parents have opened up the plan and they're contributing to it, the child is the one who's considered the beneficiary in the government's terminology for the plan. I wanna talk a little bit more about contributing to an RDSP plan. When you're contributing money to an RDSP, whether it's a parent contributing it for a child or whether it's a person over 18 who has opened up their own RDSP like I did for myself, when you're contributing to the plan, and I talk about this because I have seen this happen, those contributions to the RDSP, because of the matching portion from the government or the bonds and grants that are put in, the contributions are not tax deductible. So don't put them on your income tax as having made a contribution to the RDSP because when the government goes back and looks through your tax return, they're gonna realize that you weren't eligible for that deduction and they're gonna come back for it. So unlike the RRSP, the retirement savings plan where the contributions are tax deductible and you can put those on your income tax, contributions to an RDSP are not tax deductible. So please don't do that. So far in this video, I've talked about the age of 49 as being the cutoff to receive bonds and grants through the matching portion and the contribution portion of the RDSP. And then we talked about age 59, which is when all contributions to the RDSP stop. And that is because as of age 60, the money starts to come back to the beneficiary as payments from the plan. That's why the, everything stops at age 59 so that the money can then start to come back out to the beneficiary. And on a future video, I'm going to get into the details of how the money comes out, how it's calculated, all of those sort of things. So stay tuned for that. We'll do that one in a separate video because those formulas take a little bit to um, digest. And I thought I would do that as a separate portion because today I just wanted to talk about accumulating and amassing the money in the RDSP so that um, the beneficiary has that waiting for them when they are 60 plus years of age. Just a few last minute thoughts that I wanna share on the Registered Disability Savings Plan. If you are a Canadian resident and you have a disability, if you haven't already, you may wanna go and see your doctor about filling out the paperwork for the disability tax credit, which then makes you eligible to apply for an RDSP. And if you have done those things, then absolutely go talk to your financial institution about getting this program started for yourself so that you can start to collect these bonds or grants or whatever you're eligible for, depending on your family income. And you can then take advantage of this program to have a little bit more of a savings built up by the time you're age 60. And if you're a parent of a child with a disability, you don't have to wait either. The parents can set up the program for the child and maybe they don't get to contribute every year because the child will turn 18 and 
you know, you can work that out as things go. But if you are a parent of a child who has a disability and if the child is, is eligible for the disability tax credit and meets all those other criteria, then absolutely, I think uh, parents should also be getting involved in this RDSP program for their kids so that they're well set or at least better set financially um, beyond age 60. That is everything I wanted to say on this portion of the RDSP as far as contributing into it and how that portion all works. In a future video, I'll talk about the payments that come out of the RDSP, but we're going to leave it there for now. I want to thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you who watches these videos. Thank you so much for doing so, and I hope you have a wonderful day.